Hello friends and welcome back. This is day three, I believe, of my 60 in 30 challenge. And today I actually have three paintings for you. I'm super excited about that. I wasn't, I didn't really anticipate that I would end up having three in a single video. So we'll see if it's too many for one video, then maybe, you know, I'll, I'll keep it to two from here on out. But this day was a little bit challenging for me. I started out working a little bit more abstract. I wanted to see if I could bring down the amount of time I was spending on a single painting, make it really abstract. So this in, you know, full transparency, this was my second attempt for the day. I did have a painting that I scrapped, but it's not, I didn't scrap it because I felt like, you know, oh, this is ugly. This one isn't going to make me look good as an artist or any of those things. Sometimes with watercolor, and this happens with everybody, sometimes with watercolor, you get to a point of no return. You know, you take it to a point where you've got uh, back run stains that you can't get out of the paper and you can't really find a, a good way to incorporate it into the image and then the the paint is just all over the entire page and it looks blurry and it just it's at a place where you really can't bring it back to anything and that's really what happened actually twice <laughs> like i said in full transparency I did have two kind of false starts on this day. So you're seeing three paintings. I did actually work on five, but two of them just completely fell apart and they're not even worth showing you. But I just want you to know that, you know, that's what happens sometimes. So if you're painting, you know, if you're doing a challenge like this and you have a few of those false starts, Please don't be down on yourself. That's just what happens. It happens to everybody. I've got a huge stack of false starts. I don't know why I don't just throw them away, but I got a lot of them. So <laughs> don't feel bad if you also have a lot of them. This one just ended up being kind of a stormy sky and a field with a couple distant trees. And I really love the look of those, those two little trees on the, on the horizon. I thought they were really fun. Today I wanted to share with you kind of where, where the inspiration for this challenge even came from. So over the, I mean, well, I say over the last year, but really it's kind of a, a thing that I always go through in, in phases. Um, you know, I get kind of this reverse insomnia, like I, I fall asleep really easily, but I wake up in the middle of the night or I wake up super, super early and then I'm just up for the day. So in those, in those times, a lot of times I find myself sitting watching YouTube and, you know, discovering some really awesome things sometimes. And recently, in the last few weeks, I was up sitting on the couch at like four o'clock in the morning watching YouTube and I came across this video, it was an interview of Brian Eno and I don't know if you're familiar with Brian Eno he's Mr. Man says hi Brian Eno is a musician and a artist and he's been around for a, a really long time but he's he's one of my favorite artists and I just love Brian Eno so I saw this interview and I had to watch it and I will actually put a link in the video description below if you're interested in this interview with him. And the first bit, he's talking about an art project that he did recently, and that was really interesting. But then he got to this point where he was talking about, you know, having restrictions and how restrictions and limitations cause artists to think more creatively, to be more creative. You know, if you have a limited number of tools available to you, 
you're gonna find out, you're gonna figure out how to use those tools to the fullest extent that you can, and that causes a lot of innovation. And sometimes I feel like I have all of these colors and all of these tools and I don't know where to start because I have too many options. So that really got me thinking about, you know, limitations for myself. Here we are on to uh, painting number two real quick. In this one, I was challenging myself to use colors that I don't typically use. These colors are all very bright. They make me really uncomfortable. <laughs> I think it, it looks great at the end, but working with bright, vibrant colors is really not a comfortable place for me. And again, all of the materials, all of the colors, everything I've used, there's a list in the video description below and I separate it by which painting. So if you wanna know what blue and what red that is, I don't know off the top of my head, but it is in the video description. Anyway, so it got me thinking about limitations and I like to work with limitations you know I think a lot of you know I like to work on small canvases here we have a four by six inch I like to work with a really limited palette I like to impose limitations on myself I find the challenge to be really refreshing and it's not something that I've done a lot of lately so I watched that part of the interview it's about 30 minutes I watched that part uh, at least twice it might have been three times and I was super inspired by it but I didn't do anything <laughs> I'm like oh that was inspiring here I sit doing nothing still and then I came across another YouTube artist who does watercolor his name is uh, Steve Mitchell and his channel is the mind of watercolor and I will also link that um, I'll put that up in the information i-card up at the top but i came across one of his videos where he was talking about spontaneous painting and i watched that and i thought you know that's really a lot of how i paint when i do watercolor like all of these things he's saying and doing these are things that i feel and that i enjoy and that you know i've done a lot of that why am i not doing that why am i not doing that again and so kind of, you know, the, the reinvigoration, the excitement to do watercolor that, that Steve kind of gave me, paired with that uh, interview with Brian Eno, really put me in a place where I was like galvanized. I felt super excited to, you know, sit down, limited color palettes, small canvases, and just do the same thing essentially, the same techniques really, the same process, over and over and over and really push the limitations of what I could do on this little piece of paper with small, you know, small color palettes, small paint brushes, small <laughs> paper and find out how far I could take it. What, what could I develop in myself and in my process if I had a goal for myself along with that, that was kind of the next step. I can't just sit and, you know, bust out one or two and say, well, that was fun and then move on and sit and do nothing again for, you know, <laughs> the next three months. So I decided, all right, I'm going to have a challenge for myself. March is coming. It's a couple days away. Uh, you know, I'm going to paint every single day. Every single day I'm going to do one of these paintings. And, you know, of course, then I'm like, well, I can do more than one a day. <laughs> and... Then I started thinking about you guys again, and I'm like, but if I'm gonna be painting, I need to be, you know, interacting with my audience. I need to be providing something for them. I can't just sit and paint and, you know, forget about my audience. And I really wasn't sure if this was something you'd be into. <laughs> Watching me do these little paintings, I'm still not fully sure, but I feel like this was a good way to kill two birds with one stone, right? I can do my challenge for myself and I can try and inspire you to do the same thing, kind of take the inspiration I received from both Steve and Brian Eno and put them together and try to pass that on to you guys. So, you know, I, I, I hope that this is also galvanizing for you. And I know that, you know, a lot of people have already said to me, oh, water, watercolor scares me. I just, I'm just here to watch, I don't watercolor. 
and that's fine. I'm not trying to tell you or anyone else that you have to use watercolor. But what I am trying to gently force you to do <laughs> is create a challenge for yourself. Just sit down and think about what is it that you like to do? And what you like to do can be something so simple. Do you know what else I like to do? And it's something that I may sit and, you know, make a challenge for myself. I won't force this one on you. I won't force you to watch this one, but I like to just sit and mix colors with no, with no point in mind. Just mix little squares of color. See what happens when I mix this color and this color. What happens if I mix all of the colors? Um, you know, trying to come up with uh, little color schemes. And those are things that are really exciting and pleasing for me. And so it can be something small like that. Just sit down and do it. Say, you know what? Every day I'm going to sit down for an hour or 30 minutes or whatever you have. And I'm going to do this one thing that's super pleasing to me. That could be drawing lines. It could be just blending paint. Maybe you just really enjoy doing these, you know, perfect ombres. Pick a size of a canvas and just pick colors that you love to blend together and sit and make these ombres. Just whatever it is that is pleasing to you. It doesn't have to, you know, yield quote unquote art that you're going to hang on the wall or that you're going to sell. All of those things are secondary. The important thing is the enjoyment because it's so fulfilling and it, it changes your outlook in your day. It changes how you feel. It, it really can be such a huge, um, such a good way to, you know, pull yourself up out of a funk, reduce anxiety, you know, maybe not complete, not completely uh, heal depression, but at least soften it and give you something to look forward to. You know, every day I'm super excited now to get to my easel to sit down and make more of these little paintings. And that's not a place that I've been for a very long time now. And it's really nice to have that. And it, I do find that I am sleeping a little bit better. I still wake up pretty early, but maybe not, <laughs> not quite as early. Um, so I'm sleeping better. I feel like my attitude and my mood are a little bit better throughout the day. And it's just a really nice place to be. So whatever that is for you, you know, your enjoyment is in pencils or crayons or string, yarn, clay, wood, sand, whatever it is. Take that time to do something that you enjoy for no other reason than because you enjoy it. And, you know, if you if, if you feel like, well, I can't because it's a waste of time or it's a waste of my materials if I'm not going to make something that I can sell, then I think you're doing yourself a huge disservice, a huge disservice. There are things in the world, I mean, I understand we have to have money to live. I get that, trust me. <laughs> but there really are things in the world that are more important than money than making money, than selling something, than getting your name out there, any of those things, you know, because if you're not a happy person, if you don't feel fulfilled in your life, if you don't feel excited and passionate in your day, then it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how many people are buying your art. You won't be happy. You you know, you won't enjoy making your art. It will become a chore and something that you have to do to survive. So, you know, especially beginners, if you don't have to rely on your art to make a living to feed your family, then don't put that burden on yourself. It's, it's a burden, you know? You are in the perfect place to be able to just say, I'm just gonna do it because I love it. 
and it doesn't matter what it looks like and it doesn't matter if I sell it and it doesn't matter if anybody else likes it. It's providing something in my life that I need. So anyway, I just uh, like lamb blasted you with, with my opinions for 15 minutes. <laughs> How about we just quietly watch the end of this painting? Um, real quick, I get, again, all of the materials are in the video, video description, but I still get lots of questions. What is this? What is this? What is this? This white paint that I'm using there is gouache. Can you use acrylic? You can use anything you like. Um, if your question starts out with, can I just know that if you ask me that, I'm going to say yes, do it, try it, go for it, make yourself happy. And painting number three, since I had gone outside of my comfort zone using a color palette I was uncomfortable with in that last painting, I decided to treat myself on this one and use a color palette I am very comfortable with, a color palette that makes me very happy. Right here, uh, I haven't had any specific questions about that, but what I'm doing is this is a clean, just damp brush. I, I squeezed it off in my paper towel, and before that paint dries, if you wipe at it, it removes paint. And if it's not removing enough paint, use a wet brush, draw your line, let it sit for a moment, draw, uh, dry your brush off, come back, and it will lift that paint off. So. We will do, you know, actual watercolor tutorials at some point. This month is really just about, you know, getting this challenge done and out of the way. And then we will move on and do some actual tutorials, I promise you. So, but I saw that and I thought, I do that a lot. Somebody's going to ask about it. That is what I'm doing. I'm just removing paint with a slightly damp brush.
This was definitely my favorite painting of the day. This one felt very fulfilling to me. Both, you know, the color scheme was really, I know it's a very <laughs> drab color scheme, but it was really exciting for me. Um, you know, I, I like grays, browns, blacks. I just, that's what fills me. And uh, I was really happy with the way it turned out. There's a couple things about it that I would change. Uh, but ultimately, I was really, really happy with this one. There was something else I wanted to tell you about. Um, you know, it may seem kind of pointless, like, well, why would I just do a bunch of little watercolor paintings? I want to make, you know, large watercolor paintings that I can hang in my living room and you don't need a microscope to see or, you know, whatever. Whatever your reason is, people tend to like to paint larger sometimes too. And these little watercolor paintings, just kind of off the top of your head, off the cuff, whatever, these are more considered studies. So what a study is, it's just a way to work out an idea, work out a composition and techniques and color schemes and all of that. They are not necessarily meant just to be completed paintings. So like I did this painting and I might take it and say, okay, now I'm gonna make an actual painting out of it. I'm gonna use this larger paper and these elements that I really liked, I'm gonna make sure I bring those elements into this painting. These elements I wasn't so hot on, I'm gonna make sure that I don't do that in the larger painting, etc. So while there are a couple things about this one that I'm not totally in love with, I'm not going to tell you because, you know, you should never point out to other people, well, I don't like this. It doesn't matter. Don't tell anybody that because they might love that part. And, you know, anyway, don't point out things you don't like in your own paintings. But the things that I don't like, if I were to do a larger painting of this, I would just make sure not to do that, you know, just not do that part. Um, but yeah, so these would be studies. So if you're out, let's say you're doing plein air, you know, where you go out and you paint uh, what you see in front of you, like out in the open, you might use a small canvas like this and just quickly rough in things that you see, you know, very splashy and, and whatever, just very quick, very loose, just get the idea down. And then when you're done, you can come home and get out your larger paper or a canvas. You know, if you, you might go out and do watercolor studies, but come home and paint them in oil or, or acrylic. And now, rather than taking a photograph, which I, I feel like we get hemmed in by photographs sometimes. You know, you've got the photograph, it better look exactly like the photograph or you have failed as an artist. That's not true, but that's how we feel a lot of times. So if you rough it in, you know, on the paper with watercolor and then come home, now it's, it's more accessible to your creative interpretation, I think. Uh, we don't feel quite so pinned in by, you know, the realism in the photograph, which I find to be um, photographs feel like a crutch and once we don't have that crutch anymore we have no idea what to do as artists I know that a lot of you get in that because I hear about it all the time and I know that I've certainly gotten into that I remember I used to never paint from photographs never I never looked for photograph inspiration I just painted what was in my head and then as soon as I started painting from photographs I feel like it became this crutch that was so easy to lean on and it took away, it took away a lot of my uh, creative thinking and it made me feel, you know, like I said about that whole, well, if it doesn't look like the photograph, then I have failed as an artist. And that's, a, that's not a good place to be, to feel that way. And that's another thing that I get out of these little paintings is there's no photograph. 
I don't sit down and look at photographs or anything beforehand. I just decide what color do I want to use and where should I put it. And now that I've, you know, started with some blobs of color, what do I see in these blobs of color and how can I pull something out of them? And that is how you kind of get your creativity back, get that creative fire going and get rid of the crutch of photographs. Uh, whenever I find myself sitting down to look at photographs for paintings, I feel like, oh, what am I doing? I'm trying to get that crutch again and I don't want that. So I'm not saying I'll never paint from photographs again. I'm just saying right now I've got some serious pushback when it comes to painting from a photograph. So if you feel that same way, that you don't know how to come up with your own painting and that you always have to paint from a photograph, I really want you to try something like this. Just, just start painting and see what happens. Follow where the painting leads you. If it looks like, oh, this kind of looks like a bush, then make it a bush. Oh, this kind of looks like a, a pine tree, make it a pine tree. You know, if it looks like there's a path, then intentionally get in there and make that path come alive. That's how you come up with your own ideas. That's how you start painting without photographs. So that is the end of our day three video. I'm so glad that you guys have joined me thus far for this, for this challenge. I am one tenth of the way through, yay. And as soon as I'm done recording this right now, I am gonna go bust out some more paintings. Hopefully I'll get a, at least a couple done today. So uh, remember to spend some time for yourself today. Please leave me a comment below and let me know what kind of challenges you are making for yourself and how you feel like it's helping you or what it, what it might be teaching you. I'm really interested to hear what it is that you guys are doing to challenge yourselves. So hopefully I will see you very soon with more of these little paintings. Have a beautiful day, everyone.